To start this accelerated journey, I need to first create or find or build a CPU relocator so that I can put in a terrible fire. These are available on our sponsor, PCBWay's Shared Projects. And to do that, all you need to do is find the project you want, select it, change any of the parameters like solder mask to the color that you'd prefer. I did this one in white, but for September, you could have purple. Through the whole of September 2025, PCBWay are offering purple solder mask at no additional cost. Once you've got the item in your basket, it's as simple as checking out. Make sure that you select shipping that's suitable for your region and your budget. Using one of the cheaper couriers is something that I do all the time, and I've not as yet had any problems. Your experience may vary depending on region. And PCBWay also offer CNC machining, 3D printing, and other fantastic fabrication services. So they really are a one-stop shop for all your project needs. And all this is available at pcbway.com. So thanks PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Now the PCB has arrived, let's get it built. It's really going to be a matter of just adding the pins on the bottom and socket on the top. But not this socket, I'm using this as a jig. Let's remove the 68,000 CPU I used to hold the turn pin headers. And then fitting the terrible fire, which is missing a processor. So that's something we do need to fit. It's imperative that you make sure all of the pins are perfectly straight. Bending or breaking a pin could be a very expensive mistake on such a vintage CPU. Just a matter of adding an additional row of pins to raise it up slightly. First boot with the terrible fire in and everything appears to be completely plain sailing. It's working absolutely fine. One more thing is outstanding. 
The issue with the keyboard. Matt did send me over a replacement membrane. It's far, far too drab for this channel. So I'm using this nice purple hard membrane instead. Now all that's left is to clean all the plungers. Gently wiping each with a little isopropyl alcohol. If you find there is a lot of black coming off, you might be scrubbing too hard and removing the conductive carbon coat. I have installed Kickstart 3.2 temporarily, as Kickstart 2.04 knows nothing of the 44-pin IDE interface implemented by the simulation of Gale on the Terrible Fire. So it looked like everything was going to be plain sailing installing Amiga OS. And it all was, until I restarted the machine and it wouldn't boot from the CF card at all. At best it would hang up, but the only way I could get it to boot was by actually disabling these partitions and booting from floppy. I tried different CF cards, I tried different cables, different adapters, the same effect. Also, while filming, my power supply decided to give out the magic smoke, just to make it that little bit more difficult. Eventually, I gave in and used a simple Discord module, which works absolutely perfectly. I've installed Amiga OS, it reboots, it sees it, it does everything it should, as it should. I have no idea why these CF card adapters don't work. There's nothing complex about them, but for whatever reason, they do not work in this Amiga. The disco module has been absolutely flawless. The only problem is, it's going to stick out of the case. So I need to make an adapter to make this disco module lie down flat. So it fits in neatly on top of the terrible fire. But apart from that, this Amiga is now absolutely perfect. The keyboard functions properly, it boots, the mouse works, you can play games. I do at some point need to address the power port, which is really corroded and quite crusty. Matt has said he would like the USB-C solution that I've already shown a prototype of. I do have a newer version of that, and I'm going to put that into this Amiga. But all of that is sadly going to be the subject of yet another video on this Amiga 500 Plus because this thing has been fighting me for nearly a year but it's now in much better condition than it was when I first saw it. 